All right, we're back. We are working on the F-250 today. Today, I want to try and get my water methanol injection system reinstalled in this truck. So this is an old system from cooling mist. Uh, geez, I don't know, 10, 15 years it's been in the, in the truck at this point. I don't even remember. It's just been super reliable, works great. So I want to put it back in. So uh, I did upgrade. I've been running this 12 gallon tank and that tank has been in my toolbox all these years but i don't have one anymore because you know we have the aluminum uh, dump body on here so i need to come up with a new place to mount it and this is going to uh stir some debate but i've actually decided that i'm going to put it here all right so just hear me out now why on earth would anybody want to remove a fuel tank from the truck you know why would you want to go down in fuel capacity uh well uh, in, in my particular case, this was more about uh, simplicity than it was maximum capacity. You know, we did the 38 gallon tank in the rear and that's because I'd rather have 38 gallons in one tank than 34 in two. It's just, you know, it, it seems uh, much more logical just to have one tank and as a bonus we gain a couple extra gallons. So that frees up this tank, but also like all this, I mean it goes way under the cab, all this, all this space right here for me to work with. So. Um, I had originally debated like maybe I could retrofit this tank uh, to use as a water tank. I've decided against it for a multitude of reasons. Um, some being I don't want people to mistake it as a fuel tank, but also uh, I think it's going to cause issues with the water sloshing in the tank and it's not baffled. Can't imagine how I would baffle it. I think it's going to be just a pain in the butt uh, to make this work effectively as my 12 gallon tank already works. So. Conveniently, my tank is only about this wide, and it'll still fit in this space with plenty of clearance in the drive shaft. So uh, I think that's what we're gonna do. I think we're just gonna get this thing out of here, fit my tank in. Should be plenty of clearance to the uh, top of the bed. We have this five inch frame rail here, and then we have, uh, I think another three inches on top of that. So there's a lot of room that we can go up above here, you know, somewhere up around here. So, so there's plenty of room, so. Uh, I think at this point there's really nothing more to do but uh, get this thing out of here and uh, see how bad this is going to be. Okay, let's see how this goes. Ah. Come on. Why is it coming down all stupid? There we go, there we go. Ah, oh, this is the way to do it, man. Down. Look at this, we got miles of room to work with. This is, uh, it looks way, way roomier now. That's cool. So I'm going to uh, climb under the trunk and figure out if I can uh, Disconnect these up with the diverter and uh, I'll just cap them off or something. I don't know. Uh, we'll do something with them and then I'm gonna go grab the four jack and uh, my 12 gallon tank, which is currently just sitting in the bottom of my cart here. And uh, we'll get this thing kind of mocked up under the truck. Uh, so, so this is pretty straightforward. As it would turn out, uh, these two here are for the front tank. So I'm just gonna pop these clips off and uh, we'll just pull these lines off. I'll probably just throw caps on them for now. I'm gonna have to look at the book. I'm curious if I unplug the diverter valve, uh, which tank it'll default to. You know, and if it'll default to the rear tank, then it'll be cool. I can just leave it unplugged. Otherwise, uh, we'll have to leave the switch on the dash set for the rear tank for now. Long term, of course, uh, all this is gonna go away. I'm going to do uh, electric fuel on this truck. Uh, hopefully later this year, and then we'll do all new, uh, probably 100% new lines from the tank all the way to the engine, and then this thing will be completely eradicated. But uh, yeah, for now, I'm just gonna pop these two off. I'll throw some caps in here, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll keep moving along. They came up with a slightly better idea. Basically just took the uh, one fuel line, cut it off, and then I put the end back on and made like a loop that way I can install it with the proper fittings and everything 
So I think that will be more than adequate for now. No concerns about me accidentally flipping the switch and dumping fuel under the truck, you know? So that will uh, that, that, that'll hold until we get the electric fuel conversion done. And uh, we'll just, you know, snake that guy up, uh, up out, out of the way over there where, yeah, yeah, that'll, that'll be fine. So, okay, let me, uh, let me go get my uh, water tank and uh, we'll start mocking that thing up under here. All right, this is pretty rough draft, but uh, the tank is kind of just precariously balanced on some two by fours there. Uh, but, and it looks like it's way high, it's, it's crooked. It looks like it's way high up in the air. Uh, it's, it's actually uh, more or less flush with the bottom of the frame rail. You can see where's my, there's my uh, sump with my pickup. I'm gonna have to get a, a stainless fitting for that instead of plastic now that it's out in the elements, but Looks like it's way high up in the air, but conveniently, when you bring the vent down to it, perfect, like a glove. Uh, I, I might bring the tank down, you know, another half inch, uh, but I think that is gonna do the job nicely. So now I gotta take some measurements and figure out exactly what I'm gonna build to uh, actually get this thing mounted here. All right, I came up with a plan to mount the tank in the frame. I'm actually going to use a bunch of small mounts that are going to be all around it. Uh, they are going to mount to my original frame that was in the uh, bed of my toolbox, although I'm making a couple changes. I've added, I had a piece of scrap. I got another piece over here, actually. I, I don't know what it's from, an old cabinet or something. Um, but I had an extra piece of that piece of steel kicking around, so I made this panel for the bottom. Uh, because I want to protect it from like maybe like a stone or something coming up off the street So any, any kind of debris that might kick up under the truck And then I got a couple other pieces here that I'm gonna kind of fit in like here and around uh, Those I'm just gonna weld in uh, Somehow to the frame just so I have some kind of armor plating to protect the tank Hopefully keep uh, like I said like gravel or stones or even like um, I'd like something to deflect the wind um, hopefully, you know, the tank used to be in the, in the, inside the toolbox where it was out of the weather. So, uh, freezing in the winter was less of a concern than I think it will be now, whereas it's in the path of air under the truck. So hopefully this will serve as a little bit as a, uh, uh, deflector. You know, maybe I'll have to increase my methanol content in the winter so it doesn't, uh, it's less likely to freeze. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, but yeah, for now I'm going to, uh, grab the grinder, uh, roll the welder over and see if we can't get these panels uh, welded up on here and this way I can get a coat of paint on this thing and uh, we can get it back in the truck. I think that's gonna do it, honestly. Um, I don't really need much armor plating. This is still a little warm. Um, I'm gonna grind a couple of these welds up, but I think that's gonna be all I need. That will protect the front, the side, the bottom. Um, so, yeah, I think we're gonna go with that. All right, it's a pretty nice day out. We have, I have my tank. Now completely done. I got all sorts of fresh foam in here. All my brackets done and painted, so nothing more to do but get the tank hung in the frame.
Okay, I have the tank. It's completely installed. Now this thing is like, it is rock solid, man. We got mounts here, 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 here. And then you know, I saw the two under there as well. Like this thing doesn't, it doesn't budge an inch. So I'm pretty happy with that. It fits beautifully. Now the next thing I have to sort out uh, is where I'm gonna mount the pump. And I'm honestly not sure. I think I'm just gonna set the camera down and roll under here and sort that out because I have to, let's see, I have my, my shield here. We gotta do some wiring yet. Um, but here's our fitting that's gonna come over to the pump. I don't know yet if I'm gonna make, a, I'm, I'm debating uh, making something that will just mount here and we'll keep in the pump down low. Uh, maybe I'll try and squeeze it on the frame rail somewhere, but it's a challenge with the uh, fuel lines and brake lines there. So I'm not 100% sure. So I'm going to just grab my creeper, roll under the truck, and kind of stare at it a while and uh, see what I can come up with for mounting this pump. Pump's mounted on the frame now. This is my original uh, water line that runs all the way up to the intake. And then I have this line, which goes backwards to the tank. Uh, that actually goes to my fail-safe solenoid. And then the solenoid, obviously, is fed by the tank. I don't have this connected yet, and that's only because uh, I have to do all the wiring, and it'll be easier to wire all this up if I can just lift the, lift the tank up out of there. So this right here is my original uh, wiring harness. This went all the way, uh, originally went all the way uh, to the toolbox so that plug went to this harness which is a mile long that ran along the back of the frame uh, to the hinge and then from there it ran up the bed because you know as the bed tilted you know you, you know the toolbox is way up in the air you know so this this came through the bulkhead uh, through the front of the toolbox obviously I have the connector off it now and then it plugged into this harness and this harness was for you know that the, wasn't just the water tank in the toolbox it was also the fail safe control box it was the solenoid and it was the water pump which obviously we now have on the frame rail so uh, i'm not going to get into too many specifics for now um, i'll go over all the way the system functions later but for now i have to break all this down and i'm going to go get my book uh, because i drew out a whole schematic of how this was wired when i built it go grab my book and see how we can take this apart and then rewire it now that the pump is somewhere else and then uh, we'll come back once I have some semblance of a uh, new uh, wiring harness. All right, this was the original wiring harness that was in the toolbox. Um, everything would have been there. So my, my uh, injection pump was right here. This is uh, the fail-safe control box, a.k.a. FCB. Um, you have the solenoid right there on the side. So everything for the entire system was right here in one place. And now it's not. Now the pump is, you know, way over there somewhere. So... Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this whole thing apart because some of these wires can be moved and I can eliminate a couple connectors and stuff. So um, to that end, I am going to uh, I don't know, bring the bring the stool over, sit down, take all these old junky weather pack connectors off because um, you know 12 years ago that seemed like a good idea, but these days I have uh, a whole drawer full of uh, Deutsch connectors. So uh, yeah, just going to uh, rip this thing apart figure out a, uh, a nice cleaner installation or, or, or uh, not really installation but figure out a nice cleaner cleaner layout of wires and uh, put this put this harness back together and this is what I came up with here's my here's a new wire for the fail safe control box just have a jumper over here for uh, the inline fuse for the pump that's just going to come down and plug into this harness here which is my companion harness um, and that's that's it. That's that's literally everything. This connector here goes into the connector for the tank float, and then here is the uh, coil for the uh, solenoid. But that's the whole thing. Just plug a couple connectors in and done. So now all I have to do is I got to take the wiring harness on the truck frame, take the wedge lock off, and put the mating uh, torch connector on, and then uh, that's it. We're done. We can put this whole thing together and uh, system done and. Fill the tank and get it primed. All right, motor's all wired up now. Our uh, fail-safe solenoid is all wired up now. If we uh, come up here, 
Here's the fail safe control box. Here's the inline fuse for the pump, whole wiring harness. Everything's done. So this is my pigtail for where the uh, float plugs in. So now it's just a matter of throwing that tank in, hooking up the wiring and the uh, float, and we can fill the tank and prime the system. All right, tank is in for the last time, hopefully. Uh, three or four gallons of water in it, just enough that we can prime the system. So in order to do that, I'm gonna have to climb up here. We gotta take the nozzle out of the intake because of course we don't wanna spray uh, spray water into the intake while the engine's not running. So uh, I'm gonna take this out. We'll get it just kinda like laying off to the side of the fender over there. We'll key on, make sure there's no errors, and then uh, we'll prime this thing. So this is the nozzle removed from the intake. Currently, the pump is running at 10% duty cycle. I'm, I'm trying to run through the AutoLearn system to get this thing um, programmed so that I can start driving the truck again. So all I'm doing right now is I'm setting it to a specific duty cycle and I'm letting it run. See, there's 20% now. Uh, and I'm just letting it run for a couple minutes. I don't know, one or two is really about all it takes. And then I can just move on up to the next, which is what I'm going to do. I'll show you, for example, here, uh, if I go up to 50%. Oh, here we go. Thank you. That's a decent amount of water, man. And that's only that's only 50%. You ought to see this thing at 100. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, hang on. Turn that bad boy all the way up. And, uh, yeah. Look at that. This thing dumps a ton of water down the intake. So this does an amazing job of cooling uh, or reducing, I should say, of reducing your exhaust gas temps. So uh, phenomenal, phenomenal system. Works incredibly well. So I'm going to just run through, get all these, uh, get all these parameters and, and uh, uh, programs set, and uh, then we'll be able to drive the truck. All right, nozzles reinstalled in the uh, intake. So that means job done. So the only thing I left to do now, I simply have to program my ranges. So I'm gonna program this thing to come on at about five, five PSI, and I'm gonna program it to be at 100% duty cycle at about uh, 15 PSI. That seems to work pretty good for me for towing. And uh, that's it, done. Water injection system complete. We are now ready uh, to start driving this thing again. So that's cool. Uh, so uh, if you are interested though, we do have, I have one more project I have to get done before we take this thing uh, to the East Coast Bronco Roundup that summer. And that is right here. So if you are interested in seeing what it takes to put a set of Super Duty Leafs into your OBS, then definitely, uh, by all means, uh, stick around because it's actually not as hard as you might think. So, uh, yeah, you know, uh, I think I'm going to jump in the truck and, and, and go for a cruise, you know. Thanks for watching and uh, have a good one.